Hey Eurovision fans, Electric Fields will represent Australia in Eurovision 2024 with their song One Mil Kali, One Blood. We're going to listen react to the music video and then I'm going to give you my analysis of the song and the lyrics. Then we'll talk about Australia's place in the contest by looking at their 10 year record and their qualification record. And finally, we'll try and answer the question, can this qualify and what could it do in the Eurovision final? So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So Australia have gone for another internal selection this year and they've chosen another former contestant. Last year they chose Voyager who were runner up in the Australian national final and this year they've chosen Electric Fields who were also a runner up in the 2019 national final. So this seems to be their new strategy. Very late announcement for Australia this year. I had the feeling that they were trying to work out the finances of paying for participation. Obviously it's pretty expensive and from SBS, the Australian broadcaster's perspective, it is probably a little bit of a tough sell for them for their superiors because the show is happening at 5 a.m. in Australia. So they're basically saying, hey, we want to take part in a show that not very many people are going to watch. So I think SBS have a difficult time in trying to convince people higher up say give us money. <laughs> so I think they have to find alternative ways, grants, sponsorships, etc. They managed to do it and they found Electric Fields. So of course I know Electric Fields from 2019, they came second. I think that they had a fantastic song, 2000 and whatever. They were just unlucky that Kate Miller Heike had an incredible performance that would have won most national finals. So I like that the Australian delegation remembered them, obviously had a good working relationship behind the scenes. So a little bit about Electric Fields, they are Zachariah A, who is of Aboriginal background, and also Michael Ross, who I believe plays the piano. So they are a duo kind of giving electro pop with some Aboriginal influences. And often the songs are sung in Aboriginal. The language is called Yankut Tiatiara, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. As a group, they talk about embracing their femininity. I believe they both use he, him pronouns, but they do have a kind of more fluid presentation. So that's really cool, representing the queer community. And the song is called One Milkali. So One Milkali, presumably Milkali means blood. I'm guessing it's gonna be a song about unity, which is really cool. I'm gonna to react to the music video. <laughs> I already saw that Alicia Michelle's video got blocked. So I'm probably gonna to have to do quite a lot of audio and visual distortion to get this by. Nothing I can do about that. If you wanna see the original, I'll put it up on my Patreon. So I haven't heard any spoilers or anything. I have no idea what to expect. I'm going to the super blind. I'm expecting something kind of electronica though, and I'm expecting to hear Aboriginal language. So that's kind of cool, but otherwise I have no idea what's gonna happen now. Okay, this is Electric Fields singing One Milk Cali, One Blood, One and Number Secret Bang. Come on, Australia, fingers crossed. Ooh, very striking opening tableau of them both naked. Mmm, beautiful vocal. Zachariah's vocal is very strong. Lovely, dreamy electronic in the background as well. Very simple music video, but it's quite striking. Great to have the lyrics on screen as well. And we have that didgeridoo, but we also have this retro piano. Mmm, it's kind of retro and funky, isn't it? A little bit of soul. It's very nostalgic. Yeah, it's definitely referential to 70s, 80s, 90s. That's a lovely thick beat. It's raining love. Definitely a song about unity and coming together. Not giving too much away. They're not giving away any ideas about the staging yet. Lovely, fluttery electronic beat here now. Oh, going in for a little bit of a smooch. They're not a couple, by the way. That's just them coming together. Maybe getting a little bit of Mother Nature vibes as well. Spell the Tian reality. <laughs> yes. 618, that is that thing I'll talk about later. Ooh, lovely hearing the Aboriginal language now. Hmm. It's very, it's very radio friendly. It's not got anything too extreme in it. Ooh, okay. Getting a little bit of a chorus coming in. Love that didgeridoo coming in, really cool. And it's very organic to the song as well. Yeah, it's just got a nice easiness to it. It's not too extreme, not too weird. It's gonna feel a little bit more comfortable for a lot of people. Very easy beat to process. Mmm. Great, okay, we're building to a climax, that's important. They gave this dreamy electronica as well. They've got a fantastic relationship. 
Okay, so what are my first thoughts? I think this is quite accessible. It's not super wide. Like it hasn't got any like big wire moments. Like, oh my God, I've never heard that before or anything that's gonna cause people a lot of shock in the way that some of the reactions I've done this season, I've been like, oh wow, I can't believe that's happening. I've never heard that before. This is a bit more familiar. It's more sounds from the 70s, 80s, 90s. And they reference that. They talk about the Fleetwood Max, etc. So it's it's a conscious thing. It's, um, they're not giving us too much there now. They really are. The music video is very simple. It's a simple lyric video. So maybe they're holding the cards to their chest and thinking that there is going to be a lot of colour and vibrancy with the stage show but they just maybe don't want to show it off yet maybe they've decided that they would prefer be a little bit more strategic this year develop their ideas in private and then show it off the song is nice it's very easy to listen to it has lots of sounds that i think it's going to have a broad appeal kind of a little bit similar to luna luna is also that very steady accessible sound and that's not necessarily a bad thing especially if you're in semi-final one which this is and there are a lot of the songs that are very out there actually being a little bit more predictable and standard can actually help you stand out if you are in a semi that is largely very eclectic. It has unique aspects to it. The didgeridoo is really cool. Having the bit of Aboriginal language as well. Like obviously I'm going to go in for a silent second listen, but overall it seemed like a message of unity coming together. I got maybe, I picked up a tiny few things about mother nature as well. Maybe I misinterpreted that. Overall, my impressions are positive. I'm not watching that and going, this is definitely qualifying. I'm not saying it's not gonna qualify. We'll talk about that again later because Australia has a really fantastic qualification record. But yeah, it's not the type of thing I'm like immediately going, whoa and I've seen the reaction from the community is a little bit muted. I've seen some people who like it. I've seen some people who are just kind of not feeling the the pow. I still think this is a pretty decent starting point. There's like, it's definitely got a lot more interesting things than some of the other songs. And at least it feels very culturally Australian. It feels like this mix of the kind of like Australian club electro scene, plus these are Aboriginal sounds as well. So even if this doesn't do well, I think it's representing the country in a really fun way. So it's not just about qualifying. Obviously qualifying for the finals is nice because you get to show off your song to more people. Not all qualifications are a victory and not all non-qualifications are a failure is kind of what I'm saying. I think sometimes you can scrape into the final, but nobody really cares about you anyway. So is it really a victory? Maybe on paper. Obviously vocally, really great. We know that Zachariah, uh, <laughs> I think it's Zachariah, but just with an A at the end, is fantastic on stage and they're experienced. They've been together since 2015. They're gonna have great chemistry together. They have fantastic chemistry together. They're gonna to know how to put on a show. I actually quite like this thing that Australia are doing where they're getting their old entries in. I'm hoping Jaguar Jones is gonna be next year. That would be really cool. Like I like the concept of them saying, look, you write us a good enough song, you can get a little bit of sponsorship, you've got the you've got the job, and then this artist can go kind of really, really apply themselves for a couple of months. Okay, I'm gonna go for my silent second listen now. Yeah, that's a really lovely entry. It's really reminding me of Gustav from last year. It just feels like that same feeling. Where the song is kind of good, fine, nothing super wow. I didn't think Gustav's song was super wow either last year, but he really did a great job of building up a backstory, a feeling, an emotion to the song mobilizing the queer community. I don't know, the song kind of just became a little bit of an anthem and then he had that super iconic staging which just looked absolutely fantastic. So much representation on the stage. So I feel like Australia could very much feel that niche this year. It's funny that I've seen a lot of people talking about Iceland song, could that have a Gustav style story arc where people are putting it 35th in the odds and then it rises up to 7th? I think this is much more likely to have that story arc where people are probably sitting on it, not really paying too much attention, a little bit underwhelmed by the original. But then once we get the storyline coming in, these are people from the LGBT plus community representing also with Zachariah A, representing the Aboriginal culture as well. So there's going to be a backstory, a community feel, a feeling of getting behind the artist, getting behind the song. And if they have really wise staging, very clever staging in the same way that Gustav did, real cool costumes, this could have a similar underestimated quality that really raises it. Now, obviously there's a lot of ifs there. They have to do all that stuff <laughs> that isn't necessarily just going to come to them automatically like a magnet. They may have to try and attract it themselves. But if they can build up that backstory, which I get the sense they do, because I get the sense that they are quite like activists. So it would feel organic for them to build up those layers to the song. Let's go through the lyrics now. So one more, I stand in the eye of the spiral. One of them billions, billions. My soul slips away from its title. That's an interesting line. My soul slips away from its title. I wonder if that a, he's talking about disassociating himself from all the names and tags that were given to each other from society and from each self and just becoming kind of one with the world. One of them billions, 
and I descend to the center of the earth. So maybe it is this sense of connection with the world and kind of getting back to your roots. I may be dreaming, but the atoms are awake. Spill the tea on reality and the 0 0.618. Maybe these, these lyrics are really, really interesting, by the way, because they've got a poetry to them where it's not super obvious immediately what the meaning is. So it kind of makes you want to dig and investigate. I may be dreaming. I do think the dreaming thing is an element to dream time, which I believe is the Aboriginal. I don't know if it's the afterlife. Oh, okay, so no, the dreaming or the dream time is an uh, Aboriginal concept of every when during which the land was inhabited by ancestral figures often of heroic proportions or with supernatural abilities. So I think it's more like an origin story of uh, the origins of the people. So th I feel like using the word dream is, I know dream is a common word to use, but I think because he's Aboriginal, I do think there's a connection there. Spill the tea on reality. I love the spill the tea because that's a slight nod to the LGBT plus community. We all know what spilling the tea is. And the 0 0.618, so 0 0.618 is the golden ratio, which is a ratio that's used a lot in art and for architecture to try and give like very satisfying views. And then we also had a Fibonacci spiral come onto the screen. So Fibonacci spiral is this number that occurs in nature. I think it's in sunflower seeds and trees and so a lot of other plants. It is like a... And I had to explain its place in nature. It's a little bit complex. If, there's actually a guy called Matt Parker who does like comedy maths on YouTube. His videos are really good. He's done videos on the Fibonacci sequence and how it occurs in nature. This is like a mathematical format which exists in nature. I really feel like the song is about getting back to your roots and being one with the planet and being one with each other. So yeah, the atoms are awake and saying, and the 618. So he's talking about order within nature. So this kind of like higher power that is, I don't necessarily think it's a, it necessarily means it's a religious thing, but that there is a sentience maybe within nature, like mother nature. What are you gonna do in the real world, Mickey? I don't know who Mickey is, I'm sorry. What are you gonna do when you see Milkali? Milkali, so that means one uh, blood, blood. Escape with us to the planets, to the Fleetwood Max and the Janets. I don't fully get that one. If you get that lyric, let me know down the scope. He's just like talking about going to the club and those are the songs he likes to hear. While entertaining the gods, or is it a little bit more of a going up into, into another dimension? One Makalila, Makalila, it's raining love, one Makalila. We're on a gravitron as it tangles with them billions, billions of our souls and angels, we kiss and matter dismantles. So there's a lot of kind of like metaphysical stuff here, like atoms, matter, galaxy, the center of the planet. So there is very much this sense of like a universal big, what is the universe? Who are we in our relationship to the universe? And is that relationship healthy? Or does it need to be reassessed? To see we don't own the universe, okay, the universe came in the next line. Uh, feel the borders blur, we begin, we belong to her. Now that was the original lyric that made me think about, it was about Mother Earth, is we belong to her. I may be dreaming, but the atoms are awake. Spill the tea and rally and this 0 0.618. And then we have a repeat of the previous line. And then we finish off with while entertaining the gods, it's raining love. I really love those lyrics. I especially love this physics, metaphysical, more like robotic math mixed with like earthy organic mother nature and like how do those meet and meld so maybe that could be really interesting in the staging as well maybe we might get the fibonacci sequence in the visuals so let's talk a little bit about the staging i already said there we might get the fibonacci sequence in the visuals so there's five these beautiful spirals we see them in seashells as well actually. so maybe we're going to get a little bit of that and lots of this kind of interesting geometry coming on the leds I'm definitely expecting a very energetic performance from Zachariah A and some interaction between him and Michael as well. Definitely, I'm expecting really vibrant costumes with really Aboriginal culture and jewelry as well showing it off. So I think this is gonna look really, really cool because it's gonna stand out from that. And maybe we might get some Aboriginal art. Well, I lived in Australia for a year, I bought this Aboriginal boomerang, which I thought was really cool. So maybe we might get some of that style of dot art that I really associate with Aboriginal culture. Yeah, I think it's gonna be energy and vibrancy. If they go for this kind of clever staging that Gustav had, where he really did build a bridge to the community, maybe that might be a good strategy for them. The song is about oneness and coming together. So I think that there are gonna be more people on stage and it's gonna be about down to who are they gonna choose? What are those people gonna be representing? Are they just gonna be dancing? or are they gonna be characters? I felt like Gush Staff's accompaniment on the stage, everyone had a story or a purpose to be there. Yeah, I just got a real like coming together community feel from that whole package. I think they just did that theme extremely well. So I think there's a lot of inspiration to be taken from that for Electric Fields. And if they can deliver that level, which let's be real, Australia are really, really good with their staging. Unifying, I think that's the main feeling that they want people to feel when watching. Warmth, happiness, welcoming like Gustav had last year. And obviously they don't have to copy him, they can do it in their own way, their own Australian style. 
but just the same feelings. So before we talk about how this will do in the contest, let's talk a little bit about Australia. So Australia in the contest is a tiny bit controversial. There's some people who aren't particularly welcoming of them being there. That is not me. I absolutely love them in the contest. I think they've totally earned their place. The quality, the thoughtfulness, the creativity they've sent. They've had so many iconic entries since they've been in the contest in 2015. Like way more that some countries have been there much, much, much longer and they've had fantastic results. I appreciate the effort and the quality that they send and they send really great artists who are really great ambassadors for the country. Some people say that it's just geographically, it's not in Europe so they shouldn't be there. I think that's a bit pedantic. At the end of the day, there's a huge cultural overlap between Europe and Australia. Australia has a huge amount of people whose origins are in Europe. They speak a European language. And there's people who say, well, if you let Australia, then why are we not letting Zambia in? And Togo and Guyana and all these places. Because those countries countries have absolutely no interest or connection to Eurovision whatsoever. So there's a little bit of weird whataboutism. I don't get it. It's a little bit unfriendly and exclusionary. If Australia want to join, I think it's great and they respect the contest and they send something great. To be honest, it's not, there's not much in it for them. They're showing a TV show at 5 a.m. that not that many people see and it's kind of expensive. At the end of the day, their participation fee makes everybody else's participation free cheaper. So if you don't like them in, you have to respect the fact that they make it more accessible for other countries to enter by reducing the cost. The more countries in, the cheaper it is, especially since Russia and Belarus aren't in the contest anymore since 2022 and things are more expensive. So I fully support them 1 billion percent. Was very anxious that they were going to withdraw and I was worried that if they would withdraw that would be maybe them gone for good. So I would love a five-year contract. We haven't heard yet what the future is but fingers crossed. So let's have a look at Australia's 10-year record since they joined in 2015 and you can see they've done fantastically. So eight appearances and they've been in the top 10 five times. That is unbelievably good. And at the end of the day, I don't think that Australia gets much of a head start. They don't start with 20, 30, 40 points from New Zealand and Indonesia and some other people. I don't think that they get anything for free. So I do feel like all of those places really, really do have to be earned with clever strategizing, good artists, good songs. The songs tend to be pop, which is fine. I do like that we're getting a little bit more of this like Aboriginal feel to just give us something a little bit different. And then you know, last year with Voyager, we had a rock song as well. So that's cool. Definitely Australia mixing it up after going very, very pop for pretty much all of the other entries. Uh, of course, Isaiah had a Aboriginal background as well. So yeah, the really good represent representation from Australia, really showing off, uh, give and Dami Im having an Asian background. So really cool that they're giving, they're showing off the diversity in the country. And then Guy Sebastian as well. I think he's got a Phil part Filipino background. And so does Montaigne. I think Montaigne has a original background as well. So Australia are really representing, really showing off. <laughs> we are a super diverse country and you can see that on our entry. So that's definitely something that's super cool. I never realized how much like, how much diversity there is. Wow, that's really insane. Yeah, really, really great results there. Second place in 2016 is obviously a highlight. It's very close to winning. They won the jury that year. Those three ninth place finishes from Zaya, again, very well in the jury. Kate Miller did very well in the tally vote as well. Stunning staging, absolutely, really incredible. And Voyager uh, also coming ninth. So nine, 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 three ninth places. Some countries can't get a single ninth like Ireland. <laughs> Australia are just raking in the nines. They ha can't get enough nines. So yeah, I think, I feel like their identity is mostly pop, a lot of diversity. They really wanna be there. I feel like there's a lot of effort and passion put in and I feel like they need to work harder than other countries do to get those good results. I think the Australian delegation have done a fantastic job. Okay, now let's talk about how this can do in the contest. Let's start off with the qualification record because Australia have a really, really strong record. If we look here at the seven times that they've been in semifinals, they've qualified six times. That is a fantastic record, one of the best. Of those six qualifications, all of them have been in the top six. So winning the semifinal three times with Voyager, Kate Miller Heike and Dami Im coming second with Sheldon Riley and then fourth with Jessica Marboy and sixth with Azai. That is really incredible. Now, one time that they didn't qualify was with Montaigne Technicolor. I gotta admit, I felt like they just kind of like said, this is just not our year. They were the only people who weren't on the stage because of COVID. For me, that's got a little bit of an asterisk. I think that year they were kind of like, let's keep our seat warm so that we can come back next year. But this year's a little bit of a write off. So I think honestly, if things had been normal, they would have a 100% qualification record because they would have sent a different song, probably with a bigger package. So yes, very, very strong in the semifinals. Often people writing them off. Sometimes people saying they won't qualify, but they've never been outside the top six. Even last year, people concerned it's televote only. How are Australia going to do? Because they're televote seems to not be as strong. They won the semi-final. Now, it was last in the running order. 
that definitely helps. Latvia were last in the running order with draw the line and they came last in their semi-final. So there's no guarantees that you're gonna win just because you're last. You just have an opportunity to make a big impact. And they did that with their incredible staging. I think the staging was Sasha Jean-Baptiste as well. Don't underestimate Australia. I see people already saying that this is a non-qualifier. I think it, we do not have enough information yet to say that. The lyric video was really simple. I don't think they were giving much away. We know that Australia are conscious of the fact that they need to bring something big because they're kind of at a disadvantage. And Electric feels, I think, really want to be there. So they're not going to waste this opportunity by standing on the stage with a wind machine. <laughs> I think they're going to do a little bit more than that. So yes, very good chance to qualify. This is in the second half of the first semi-final. The semis are kind of evening out now. I think they're both very strong. Definitely that first half of the first semi-final is the strongest. You've got a 10 to 15% higher chance of qualification. So that's important from Australia. And we are starting to get a couple of weak songs now in semi-final ones. Now, obviously those countries can do big revamps or big changes or something. But at this point in time, you got to think that Australia is definitely in with a shot. If you make me guess at this point in time I'd say that they are qualifying just based on that streak that history never been outside the top six even when lots of people doubting them they've gotten the job done somehow in the final how could this do again I'm still concerned about the Australian televote in the final it does seem to be kind of reduced last year Voyager really well in the semi-final and lower in the final again I think that was partly to do with Caria because anyone who was kind of remotely rock orientated was so like 20 votes to carry out and then maybe like or maybe 19 votes to carry out one vote to voyager i felt like people just prioritized him because they're really trying to push him to the win yeah i still feel like there is also just that some people just won't vote for australia because they can't accept that they're in the contest which is sad but i think that is reality what percentage of people are at that i think it's a spectrum i think some people are like adamantly no i think most people will vote for it if they like the song you know they did well with kate mirahaki and with Sound of Silence, those got like significant points. And I think it varies by country. I think more, some countries are open to giving a 12, other countries less so. So yeah, Televote I think is a little bit tougher. Jury, we know that Australia can do really, really well with the jury. So yeah, I think this could definitely be the same. This could come top 10 with the jury. The Voyager were last year as well, weren't they? Yeah, the Voyager were sixth. Australia know how to bring that professionalism and wow onto the stage that the jury really respect. Something really well put together. I can't see people marking this down massively. There's nothing to really like hate about it. You might not be wowed by the song, so you might slip down a bit for that, but I don't think anyone's gonna go, oh, I absolutely detest that song, I'm putting it last. So I think this will get jury points if it gets to the final. So the first step for the Australian delegation is get to the final. The jury will come in, I think, give them some support. And then I think that this has potential maybe to creep onto the left side of the scoreboard. Again, Australia coming ninth last year. Um, I don't feel like this song is much weaker than Voyager's song. I feel like it's on a kind of similar level. It's obviously different, but I think the quality is there. I, I wouldn't underestimate Australia. I think top 13 is possible. Uh, and you know, obviously if they really mess up the staging or there's no emotion or feeling in this, we're talking about not, it not even qualifying. So it doesn't worry about the final. Let's have a quick look at the odds and see how it's doing there. And this is 20th. This is currently in 20th and it's gone down a bit. So they were 17th and they've gone down to 20th. Again, doesn't really matter if the rehearsal pictures come out and they're incredible and we start to get a more idea of the visuals and whatnot. I think it could jump up a little bit. Yeah, I don't think this is going to win. You have to realize that the winning odds are not a ranking of who's the best. It's literally just how many people think that it could win. Okay, and what do the community think about this? Yes, it's quite a, it's down in 24th. So a bit of work for the Australian delegation to do. At the end of the day though, visually they've given us nothing so far. They've just given us that very simple lyric video. So other countries are higher, but they've got like more of a story going on. Australia still has to deliver the story and color and energy and performance. And I think it'll go up a bit from that. Okay, what did you think about Electric Field singing One Mil Cali, One Blood? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me recently on Buy Me A Coffee and PayPal. And also thank you to Annika for supporting me on Super Thanks. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave links for you in the description down below. I am a full-time content creator, so I rely on your support to keep the channel going. And of course, thank you to my patrons all over the world for patronizing the channel. On my Patreon, you can get the original audio and visuals when I get copyrighted. You can also be part of our My Year Vision Scoreboard group. You can get some early releases and you can get some updates on the channel. So go check that out if you're a fan. But of course, thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video. And thanks so much for watching. See you in another Year Vision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.